Hey guys, Reaper here. Today we're looking through the concept of early wars, mostly with an emphasis on multiplayer, but I'm also going to try and throw in some AI advice in there for what it's worth. Dominion 6 has definitely improved AI over Dominion's 5, adding in diplomacy a little bit, but it's still a little iffy. Still, strategies that are specific to AI I'll try to throw in here. Several concepts are fairly detailed in early wars, and in one short video I don't really want to take up all the time by going too far down the rabbit hole with these concepts. So instead I'm going to discuss how I view early wars and what my decision making processes like as well as going over the specific spells that come to mind in certain situations and why. This will not and frankly cannot be a completely exhaustive guide on early wars. The skill and finesse with surviving early wars I would argue is one of the most important deciding factors in your success in multiplayer games. Too often a new player will leap into full-blown war against somebody without calculating the cost versus benefit analysis only to hamstring themselves against the other players while the veteran players will sit there and let them blow their energy out and then they will take over the game after quite easily against their weakened forces. After all, even if you win fight number one, if it doesn't lead you to becoming player number one, then it's a lost fight. Let's get started. All right, what is an early war? Truthfully, players bump each other all the time, which is just when two or more players send armies during expansion into the same province. Inevitably, one loses and feelings can be hurt, but this isn't really a war, at least not all the time. If you happen to bump an early age hell-blessed set of burning ones and they slaughter you, this might be the start to an early rush war, but this is where diplomacy becomes an important factor, as well as scouting. In multiplayer, diplomacy decides a lot of things, a lot more than you might think. And even if you're against the AI now, diplomacy amounts to, you know, mostly just a simultaneous cap rush from all sides, but you can actually make alliances in single player now. To any players you bump in a multiplayer game, feel free to send out a diplomatic missive. It's good to reach out and see if you are in an early war or if this was just an accidental bump. At the very least, say hello, because it might pay off in the future when you're at war with somebody else and you might need assistance, or perhaps a forged item that isn't in your paths, or at the very least a safe border so you can focus your forces in the other direction. Beyond ordinary expansion bumps, you have border raids and small fights. These are inevitable, and if you're facing elves, you're going to learn to hate this. Small armies carefully calculated to raid your provinces and then vanish often require very specific knowledge about the exact raiding parties to defeat them, so pay attention to the combat resolutions against your province defense. Watch the videos and see exactly what they're scripting, how they're scripting, and more importantly, if they're changing it fight to fight or leaving it the same. Medium sized armies are large that are barreling down on your cap, however, you need to watch the scripting for as well because in order for us to win an early war, we need to know exactly what we're facing. Alright, as daunting as the task may be, in early wars, you're going to be facing several types of situations. Against small raids, we often need to figure out exactly how they're defeating our presumably six province defense and counter it with specific hidden counters. Increasing defense won't generally work well, at least not cost effectively, because their entire strategy is designed around defeating province defense specific. Oftentimes, this involves thugs or small raids raiding parties, so we'll discuss good anti-thug spells here real quick and what makes them so useful against thugs or small parties. If you are a fire nation, you have a couple of answers. One, you can find under Conjuration, which summon lesser fire elemental for one gem is phenomenal. Early game, you can hit Conjuration 3 pretty quickly, and if you hide a level 1 fire mage somewhere in your province that you think is going to be raided, and you manage to catch that thug, have your mage stand off to the side and summon a small fire mage, and if they don't have fire resistance built in their thug, it's an easy way to kill them, or even better, if they don't have magic weapons, it can actually do quite a bit of damage to their whole little tiny raiding army if they have a couple. There's another spell that I always like to use under Alteration called Combustion. This spell is like a weaker version of Incinerate, but early game you gotta kinda look at early stuff like Immolation, Combustion. I like Combustion just because it lights them on fire. Their troop or thug doesn't have any fire resistance. This lights them up and lets them just burn. That pays off pretty well as long as you're in a hot province and I'm assuming if you have fire mages, you're probably in a warmer province rather than not. This is a good little snipe as it has 100 precision, so it picks them out, takes care of them. And it's, it's a fairly good maneuver to do. Another one you can do if you're looking into thaumaturgy is you can do bonds of fire. This will only do one person, but if you have your mage, even with a six province defense, and you cast bonds of fire on a thug, and they don't pass their morale check, even if they do pass their morale check, that first turn, they will have zero defense, and your PD will be able to chop them up if they're a high defense raider or elf thug. Now, if they have small groups of raiders, this won't be as effective, but again, you can cast it five times with your mage before he's fatigued out, six times technically with reinvigoration, and so you have a really good shot at holding some of them down so you can take them out. These are pretty good fire answers to high defense thugs, and generally speaking, early, early thugs are going to be high defense elves and similar things. So let's take a look and try and find some earth counters. Earth, you can summon earth elementals. They regenerate, they're pretty tough, but smaller ones 
suffer from the problem that all regenerators suffer from, which is they can be killed before they can regenerate. They do trample, so it's fun to grab them if you want. But Alteration, Earth Grip, this is essentially the same as the Bonds of Fire. It holds them still and gives them zero defense. Holding little raiders and high defense troops still for your province defense to chop them up is a really good way to do things. Generally speaking, it helps a lot more than you'd think. And I love these low level spells. And then at Alteration 3, we get the improved Earth Meld, which is a larger area of effect. And then when you go into Alteration 4, you get this spell Destruction. Somebody has actual armor on their little raiding parties and their high armor. This will knock out their armor and make them squishy so that your province defense can actually do some damage to them. All these things can be brought together depending on what their script is to help you beat them. But please, whatever you do, don't allow your Earth Mage to drop flying shards, something with low damage like this. The problem with flying shards is generally speaking in terms of thugs, archery isn't the worst thing because it ignores defense, but thugs are kind of designed to deal with low damage archers and similar things. So why would you bring an expensive mage to fight off a thug if you don't have a different way to attack them than a couple weak archers would? Now, there are a few enchantment spells you can drop. Gift of Giant Strength or Strength of Giants if you don't have that much research going. That plus four strength can actually give you five or six damage on some two-handed weapons, and that can be enough to punch through high protection thugs' defenses. So again, it always depends, but these are good little tricks to kind of help you take out particular thugs. Generally speaking, this is better in large-scale battles, but it does deserve a mention because it can help. And when you get a little higher in enchantment, if you're forced to go down this way for an early war, weapons of sharpness, making your slashing and piercing melee attacks deal armor piercing damage is a huge benefit. That really helps against thugs. Now let's move on to water. We have some water elementals. Water elementals are really strong for a particular reason, and it's because they have armor piercing attacks. They have armor piercing, I think they're called crush attacks, that the small water elemental at level three only does one attack per turn, but at level five, the water elemental you get does four attacks per turn. That's four armor piercing attacks with decent damage. That's a really good way to knock thugs out. Even the best thugs can get swarmed by these and just murdered for one or two gems. That's something I highly recommend. Another option you can look at is the spell freeze. Freeze slows a unit and gives them fatigue, which some thugs have to balance their fatigue versus their reinvigoration. Not as much as an SC, but a thug still has to worry about their fatigue because the higher fatigue you get them, the more likely it is for them to fail their protection rolls and get crit. And that can be enough to turn the tides with PD because like I said, most thugs and small raiding parties are carefully calculated to use the least amount of force necessary to be able to take the most provinces. So freeze is a good one. Um, a little higher up, slow, does the same thing, kind of slows them down, gives them a little lower attack and defense without the fatigue. That's also helpful. Anything helps, but the, the big trick is frozen heart later on when you get a little higher. This is not for super early, but I wanted to mention it here. Just because 10 armor negating cold damage being spammed by a bunch of mages is like a thug or super combatant murder machine. It's it's pretty brutal. A special mention here is Evocation 3. We have rain against Abyssian thugs or fire-based troops. This jacks up the fatigue on a lot of mages that are casting fire spells in the beginning and then thugging and any flying guys, any flying thugs, this helps too. Rain is a little bit better in battles because, you know, it's a gem for a very indirect result, but it is something to mention because you never know. Sometimes people just put one or two, you know, squishy thugs, but with fire shield and say heat aura, and they just hope to take provinces with that. So this could help. I figured it was worth a mention. Under Thaumaturgy, we have Desiccation. This thing is phenomenal for throwing fatigue on a thug. If you just have a thug running in and you sneak a mage in there and start dropping this on this guy, eventually he'll fatigue out and he will just get stomped. It's a pretty high MR check too, so not very easy for them to survive that one. And finally, if you are running into the problem of heat auras, cold auras, there are a couple of water spells that are actually pretty good at protecting your basic province defense from these auras. Under Alteration 3, we have Fire Resistance, which gives them all five fire resist, which basically ignores the heat auras. And we have Lesser Winter Ward under Enchantment, which gives them the cold auras. Air. Air is one of my favorites in particular. They don't need much help against raiding parties, to be honest. Air is pretty good. They're pretty well designed to annihilate small raiding parties and thugs. It's hard to find something in air that isn't good. Summoning Lesser Air Elementals, they're size four tramplers, and they're great, good defense. Level five Air Elementals are size seven tramplers. They are absolutely disgusting. They may have been nerfed in Dominion 6, but they're still ridiculously powerful and they're very hard to handle for a thug. Other spells such as Lightning Bolt for low level evocation. This has a great precision score. So even just one mage standing behind your province defense, dropping this on somebody can annihilate them. And if they don't have any shock defense, this shock can stun them and hold them in place. And it's pretty brutal for a thug to lose their defense and be getting annihilated by lightning armor negating damage. I mean, you have shocking grasp here at level one that you can 
and use it does good damage but the problem is that range i would never cast this i would never let my mage default to casting this either just for that reason and good god don't let your mage cast shockwave this spell will kill your mage more than it will kill anybody else in general theoretically if you look at the numbers it seems to have good results but i have never once seen it work well unless it's a very specific like pretender chassis flying to the back and then drop in shockwave on people i've seen that happen shockwave is an effective spell but if you're really trying to take out a thug with your province defense don't do it because you're going to annihilate your own province defense and you're probably going to kill yourself one last note is steel breath here 30 range 20 fatigue 5 precision and 40 fatigue damage this is really solid against a lot of troops as long as it's not a water breather undead being or inanimate being and they don't make their magic resist check which sounds like a lot but believe it or not most things aren't those you have 40 armor negating fatigue damage dropping on the thug if you do this twice that thug is crippled and if you do it three times that thug is unconscious and getting beaten to death by your pd sneaky little spell you can do if you're already going up thaumaturgy for some reason oh astral good old astral for killing thugs and super combatants alike we have our classic you know troop buffs that we can always point buff province defense with body ethereal this if the thug doesn't have a magic weapon actually makes it pretty good the problem is most thugs have some kind of magic weapon on them you know frost brand or something similar so this might not be your best bet you know point buff and pd that can't kill something anyway if you want to go into evocation instead starfires does five armor negating damage with decent precision and so you can actually thump thugs pretty good with this if they don't have a lot of hit points if they're 20 30 hit points you cast this five times in a row that thug's basically dead that's something that can easily turn the tide against them if the thug happens to have astral magic on them you can do magic duel where you bring a gem and you try and thump them in an astral battle this depends because if you bring a high level astral mage you'll win but if you bring a low level astral mage which is kind of the advantage of this spell taking low levels to attack a high level i don't see a good way to do this so i mentioned it i don't feel like it's a good way to go under enchantment you have second sight if you have the death cross path which if the thug or the elves especially are dealing off glamored unit you know advantages to beat your province defense this will help caster thump on people and you can give the gift at level five but it does help with your caster just in case he's having trouble with them now finally we get to thaumaturgy this is where i like to say astral magic becomes dickhead of stopping thugs and super combatants thaumaturgy one horror mark can't miss hits one person and it horror marks them this just ruins their day even if you lose that fight it, it, this, that thug is ruined it like it just it's like i said it's the dickhead you might lose but they're gonna lose long term level two with a magic resist negates you got 12 armor negating damage against one person always hits and you're just dropping it on somebody you can annihilate somebody with this if they're thugging go to paralyze at level four you get another armor negating paralyzation on the thug and then they're just sitting there getting beaten to death you go all the way up to level five you have soul slay like i said this is like if you really want to be a jerk to people that thug this is how you do it you do it with astral magic it's pretty vicious and brutal and even if they have immortal thugs which people love doing soul slay takes them out permanently immortal beings will stay dead with this spell glamour is the newest path in dominions and it seems to suck against early thugs and raiding parties glamour is more like defense and buffing your troops as opposed to offense and taking thugs out but we can still try a few tricks under enchantment one we have false fetters which used to be an air spell if i'm not mistaken and it's basically the same thing as our fire bond and our earth meld and all of those spells that hold them still so your province defense can beat them to death there's nothing wrong with holding a thug down so that their high defense turns to nothing and then beating them to death with province defense that's i mean that's probably the best answer you have under thaumaturgy however you have a spell here called curse if you have the astral cross path this never misses and it always curses them and there's a lot to be said about a thug that just got cursed because it's permanent and cursed units generally get beaten to death given enough time thaumaturgy also has sleep at level two sleep at level two is great because if the thug's asleep he's going to sleep the reason i like this spell in particular is because it may only target one person but the hundred precision means you're not going to accidentally hit your own pd and that's a problem with a lot of these like anti-thug stuff is you can hit your own pd and really cause a route quite quickly so that's that's pretty nice and nature nature has a little more difficulty than some it's kind of like glamour in the way that it's a little more defensive there are a couple weird things you can do against thugs that it might be a little unorthodox but i've seen it work so i'm just going to mention it here under enchantment under level two now that we have these lower level you know in venom arrows spells if you cast this on your province defense and the thug is not resistant to poison this actually can work now it doesn't work if you look over at a spell like poison darts poison darts does the same thing but it's you and the reason i don't like this is because this is not any better than an archer shooting against one person like one thug except now your mage has to spend their turn every turn casting this whereas if they just cast in venom arrows and you have little cheap province defense archers they're going to keep firing over and over and over and over and over and applying this 
this to the thug. That's the idea. Now in Evocation 1 and 2, we have Vine Arrow and we have Web. Web is great. It's the same as the other. You're starting to notice a trend where I like to hold the thugs with high defense still and let my province defense beat them. And Vine Arrow actually does some damage, but it'll most likely be ignored by thugs. Um, it's magic damage, so if they're ethereal thugs, this will be good for them. But in general, I don't like zero precision spells against individual thugs. I generally like higher precision spells that'll hold them in place and let my troops beat them to death. That seems a little better. You also, under Conjuration, have Tangle Vines. I mean, it's an AoE 1, and it does kind of the same thing. It's better in growth scales, which if they're thugging into you and your Pangea or somebody, this is going to be great, but depends what kind of poison you want. And frankly, depends which direction you're going, because if you're rushing up Conjuration already, you might as well just use Tangle Vines for it. Now, under Death Spells, we have Spirit Curse, which is notable because it costs one Death Gem, but it curses them forever. So that's nice. It's, it's just expensive, so I feel like it's not worth it. I feel like the gem cost is outrageous, but to each their own. I've seen people use this in multiplayer games. Hand of Death is phenomenal. Hand of Dust is good. Six armor negating damage, but range of one. Hand of Death is also a range of one, but it's 40 armor negating damage. So if you have, you know, your PD distracting them and you have a mage that you're not afraid to put in melee combat against a thug, this will annihilate most thugs. This will handle it. Results may vary. Drain Life at Alteration 5 is much better and at range, but obviously you're probably not going to have Alteration 5 this early, especially not on a death nation. You're not going to be rushing Alteration 5 unless you have some very, very specific strategy involving, you know, invulnerability thugs or something going on. Under Evocation 3, you have Shadow Bolt. It's 7 armor negating damage, but they do get a magic resist check for half damage. It's an AoE 1 with good precision, and it paralyzes them. This is solid. This, this can really hurt somebody, especially if you have undead troops that you can summon, you know, animate skeleton or something, and then start throwing this at people. This is an okay one. Generally speaking, I don't like this. I don't think it's great. I'd rather wait until until evocation, you know, four for Bolt of Unlife, because this is more than double the damage, and it's armor negating, magic resist negates, and same AoE precision. I'd rather wait for the Bolt of Unlife. I wouldn't throw my death mages in there with level three if I was that close to level four. And in general, animating skeletons and animating the dead sucks against thugs, because thugs are designed to beat PD, and these skeletons are even worse than PD, and you're just burning fatigue on your low-level mages trying to spam them with one skeleton at a time. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's great. If you get up to raise dead, sure, that might work. Or raise skeletons, depending on the type of thug. If it's a high defense thug, raise dead might be great. Surround them, harassment penalty, and beat them down. But it's dangerous to do this. It works if you have this kind of research, but I would rather use pretty much anything else. All right, guys, now that we've already discussed thugs and small raiding fights and ways to counter them for minimal cost, now we're going to discuss early war army spells. Spells that you can put a little more investment into them, and they actually pay off a little, and they get a little higher in the levels. Some of the spells I stretch to like six and seven levels in each school, but most of the time I'm trying to keep them five and below. A few have a gem investment, but remember, we're trying to keep the cost low because if you win the first war, but you lose the battle for it, it's not worth it. So some of the stuff that you're going to run into that you have to expect if you're against a Fire Nation and you have to use if you are a Fire Nation, they're pretty varied, but we have to go to the basic. I'm going to go to the basics every time with these guys because summoning lesser fire elementals is great. Summoning medium fire elementals is even better. If your enemy doesn't have magic weapons or an easy way to target ethereal beings, fire elementals can rip through entire armies. They, like, they may have been nerfed, but they there's still a lot to be said about an ethereal fire shield, fire aura monster running through your opponent. Something that handles a lot of problems for you as a fire nation and trying to kill a fire nation. If you don't expect these to come your way, you are sorely mistaken. And the thing about elementals is the same thing about evocations. You don't want to hit level 5 conjuration as your rush for an early war and and then summon one of these in a battle. You want to send three or four mages with four to six gems each and just have them spam these, or 10 mages with one gem each and have them spam these. Because you have relatively low casting, all you need is a level two fire mage to cast Phoenix Power and then start pumping these out. And yeah, they'll fatigue themselves out, but if you get each mage to cast it once, that's five large fire elementals running around. And it when they wake themselves up a few seconds later, they'll do it again, and then they'll be down for the count for a while. But that's, you know, two gems per mage and two fire elementals. That's a huge force multiplier for you. So that's something to seriously consider. Now under alteration, I've already mentioned it, but combustion is an okay spell. It's area of effect one. So it can light people on fire. The thing that this is good for really is morale because it does a little bit of damage over time, um, but it's pretty easily countered with rain, snow, that kind of thing. So one thing I like a lot better against elite troops is incinerate. It's 18 armor negating damage against one person. And if you have a couple mages castiness in the back lines and you have an enemy that has some thugs or some elite sacreds 
dudes running around, this can really mess them up pretty bad if they don't have the proper resistances. Under Alteration, you can go a little further and get Solar Eclipse here at level five. Solar Eclipse is phenomenal. I'm sorry, Solar Eclipse is phenomenal if you have the ability to see in the dark and your opponent does not. That plus three, you know, swing on attack, defense, and precision, that's very powerful when you spread it out across all of your troops. Battlefield wise spells are very strong and Solar Eclipse is early. So if you have these paths, the Fire Astral Path, expect this against someone who has those paths and you should use it if you have those paths and those kind of troops. Some of the more basic fire spells, obviously Fireball. Fireball is good with spamming and great with more spamming. It leaves an area of flames, a cloud. It le does a lot of damage on direct hits, but it's really not great precision wise. And so you need to spam this spell. If you don't spam Fireball, there's really not much of a point in casting it. It's a lot better just to spam it with a couple of evocation mages. You know, you have five or six guys back there casting Phoenix power to reduce the fatigue cost and then just dropping a bunch of fireballs. This can do a lot of AOE damage, especially to tightly knit groups that don't have resistances. Under enchantment, we have a couple spells that we can either use or expect to be used against us. Now that they've made it possible to have flaming arrows at a lower level, level two, this does something. As long as enemy troops don't have 16 protection or higher, this will make your archers actually do noticeably more damage and light people on fire. Pretty decent spell to cast AOE one, and I'll go over point buffing a little later, but having ignite arrows or flaming arrows up is pretty decent, especially since you can do flame ward and the larger effect of flame ward as well. So you can kind of protect your own troops and you can give your own troops fire damage. I don't know how much of an investment I'd want on this unless I knew my opponent did not have any fire resistance or ease of access to fire resistance, because as soon as they get five fire resistance, this spell is absolutely useless. Falling fires, however, right here at level five evocation is a lot of armor piercing damage with a great area of effect and it leaves a lingering cloud. This is uh, terrible precision, but the area of effect usually means you're going to hit the people you're aiming at. Good spell to spam once you get your levels up, because if you're at a fireball level two, if you can cast that, right? If you're a level one mage, you can never cast either one. But as soon as you hit level two, you can cast fireball or or you can Phoenix power to lower fatigue, or you can Phoenix power just to be able to cast falling fires. Either way, if you have access, you have no excuse not to switch from fireball over to falling fires. Now, a notable spell I wanted to point out is Firestorm. If you're getting rushed by something like middle-aged or more at hordes of undead or somebody spamming horde of skeletons against you, like Soromadia in the early age, this is a great spell to eliminate them because not only does it hit all the undead chaff, but it also hits the mages. That being said, it's a you know level seven spell. So unless you're rushing up evocation for some reason and you're already getting up here when you're in your early wars not really something that's very relevant to you prison of fire you should be able to get the thaumaturgy four if you're hurrying this does an area of effect version of bonds of fire if you're against somebody who utilizes a lot of elite troops like sacred troops running around this is really good this is a really good way to hold a bunch of them in place do some armor negating fire damage to them but more importantly making their defense zero so your troops can chop through them if you have something coming at them now we're going to look at earth and honestly the hardest part about earth is deciding which school to research first. To be honest, Earth has way too many good spells to use, so you have to look at your opponents and decide carefully, as more protection won't help you against giants because they're going to hit you for 30-something damage anyway, so, you know, three or four extra protection won't help, so don't rush alteration or construction, but evocation might be the ticket. Against weaker hordes, protection buffs might be exactly what you need, or maybe an earthquake to take out a bunch of troops at once, so then you'd want to rush alteration. Either way, a couple of the things you want to look at, we have the summons, larger or lesser Earth elemental, and earth elementals. They are trampling, they are big, and they regenerate damage. They trample, they're tanky, they regenerate, they're good. The bigger ones are exponentially more effective. Something to consider if you have earth summons in mind for battle. They're they're not bad. They're not the greatest, but they're not bad. And a lot can be said for a tanky regenerating trampler. Now, under alteration, we still have the earth grip. We have earth meld, which is a larger area of effect version. And instead of the fire one going up to three, earth meld goes up to five, which makes it great. This is phenomenal. I mean, it breaks up troop formations. It's phenomenal at screwing up. And frankly, holding troops still is what you like because you're a slow blocky boy. So destruction gets special mention here because it has an area of effect of six and it takes out armor of troops. If the enemy troops have armor, this does more than you'd think. It makes it very good dropping the armor off them. And then you're basically going against bare chested warriors for the rest of the fight. So that's nice. Another good one under alteration is curse of stones. Curse of stones slows the enemy army, causes fatigue per 
square moved and raises their encumbrance, so fighting causes even more fatigue. This is a phenomenal battle spell. If your troops are somewhat tanky, which if you have earth magic, they are, and you can survive, if you rush alteration, you get all these spells. Group stone skin to give your troops more protection, curse of stones to exhaust the enemy, mages and troops. You get all these buffs, and this is a really a good pathway to come down for most general earth nations. This is a really strong, even marble warriors at level 7 starts hitting an AoE of 20. It's really good. I mean, even if you're against inanimate troops, Shatter does insane amounts of damage. There's so much here for battles that you can get from earth magic. I really don't feel like anybody with earth access is going to have trouble in combat unless they have only like level 1 earth mages, which level 1 mage is not really a battle mage anyway. Something to consider is group iron skin is really powerful. Iron skin is also area of effect 1. It's only 3 higher, but it's pretty good. Just be cautious when you're using these earth abilities because they will give you vulnerabilities. You know, if you cast stone skin, it'll give them susceptibility to cold. If you cast iron skin, it'll give them susceptibility to shock. So be cautious if you're fighting a nation that has evocations. You know, you're going against some air nation, you're going to get annihilated if you're iron skinning all of your troops. And they really, their thunder strikes won't care about your extra 13 protection. They really won't. Now, if you go into evocation and you cast gifts from heaven, please good lord, cast some kind of precision buff or make sure somebody's not casting storm against you because this will annihilate entire squares very very fun especially against blood bond blesses because it'll make the damage spread ha, i like alliteration blood bond blesses but if you drop this incorrectly you're going to hurt your mages quite a bit. now it's really good if you have your mages really far back in the battle and your troops really far back and the enemy on the other side to cast this in the early rounds that's great because you can spam this twice you'll be fatigued out and then you can cast some other safer spells and you'll just if you hit them with this it will annihilate them but just be, be really cautious there are a lot of times when gifts of heaven goes horribly horribly wrong and you don't want this to be one of those times oh yeah you stupid giants now you're gonna see how tough you really are against the might of buffed boars <laughs> Yeah, not so easy to chop through with their protection, is it? Yeah, drop some gifts of the heavens on you. Let's go. Oh, wait. No! No! You idiots, aim. Aim, you pigs, aim! Oh, that di oh. Oh. Oh.